Well, let's talk to Henry Pryor. He's a property buying agent. Um, good to see you. Thanks for coming on the programme. Let, let's start with the, the UK market. I mean, do you think it's peaked or might it get even hotter? I don't suppose that the UK housing market could get much hotter. We've seen one of the country's biggest mortgage lenders uh, announce and update us just yesterday that annual house price inflation, as far as they're concerned, is now at just under 14% per annum. So over the last 12 months since uh, the introduction of the stamp duty, the buyer's tax that you referred to, was brought in in July last year, we've seen some buyers saving as much as £15,000 sterling, but they've been paying to buy a property on average £25,000 sterling extra. That's what has uh, surprised many people, and it is what some, including those in the government and the Bank of England, have been watching quite carefully. So a saving of about um, $21,000, but actually the house prices themselves have gone up about $35,000 each. Look, considering the, the economic shock of the pandemic, you might have thought that prices would collapse. Why haven't they? The housing market never likes uncertainty. Ordinarily, we would expect political changes, general elections, referenda, which in the UK, obviously, uh, we've experienced just recently. These are all things that tend to ensure that buyers and sellers both sit on their hands and do nothing. So it's come as a great surprise to most people, myself included, that the housing market has actually seemed to thrive uh, during the global pandemic. Coronavirus has been something that has uh, reminded many people of their mortality and as such has stimulated many of those people, if they're in a position to, to go out and to change the sort of housing that they are after. And as you observed in your introduction, Many people now want space. They want flexibility. They don't want to see, uh, a, they don't want to be in a hermetically sealed uh, flat with no outside space on the 15th floor of a glass tower. They want somewhere that they can homeschool their kids, where they can entertain their friends and family when they're allowed to do so, where they can work from home, a growing trend that we're seeing, not just in the UK, but around many parts of the world. These are things that have driven people's demand for new homes, and it's the cheap prices cheap money, low interest rates that have enabled people to borrow more money and to be able to fulfil those dreams of new homes for their family uh, by paying more money for those homes in the first place. Well, you've said it, borrowing it is quite cheap at the moment, but there is a shortage of affordable housing. Now, Ireland have got a scheme, haven't they, to control that to an extent, to, to put a lid on the, the amount of um, investors who pile in and snap those deals up. Do you think that's going to work and should it be a blueprint for the UK? Ireland has uh, provided many clues to many housing markets around the world, continues to do so today. The gap between those who are able to afford new homes and who are driving house prices ever higher is widening between them and those who are unable to get onto the housing ladder to find homes either to buy or indeed to rent. And many, pro many housing markets around the world are struggling with this dilemma. They want to see a healthy housing market. They enjoy seeing high house prices or higher house prices, and politically that plays very well. Politicians find that the electorate is much more predictable and takes fewer risks when it comes to where they will place their votes every, free, every few years when a general election comes round. But we do have to look out for those who aren't uh, as fortunate, and Ireland's lead, I'm sure, will be copied elsewhere. And in the UK, we've seen government uh, stimulus, we've seen government packages come along to help those trying to get their first home and to clamber on to the housing ladder. Some have been controversial, some yeah. have been have led to higher house prices, ironically in themselves. But it's something that's not unique to Europe, not unique to the United Kingdom. And neither is the, the risks to commercial real estate. Henry Pryor, absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Pleasure.